Yeah, I want to address who is in the audience. I know we've got some clients in the audience. Um, we've got some potential clients in the audience. We're so glad you're here. We also might have some other people that are in the events industry on this call that want to learn more or other live artists that want to learn more. And we're happy that you're here too. Um, you know, we want this to be a valuable experience for everybody. And so we're glad to have you here. So Kent, go ahead and share your screen and show our audience what you are working on. Pull this sketch up here. Awesome. So Kent, this is, uh, this is Kent's sketch. He's going to be filling this in with amazing content throughout, the, uh, throughout this webinar. We've got all of our amazing panelists there. And so um, Kent's going to be doing that. And we'll, we'll peek in on Kent's work here and there throughout this webinar. So Kent, happy to have you here. You can go ahead and turn your screen back off and we'll keep running through our content. So um, real quick, for those who are a little bit less familiar, the Sketch Effect, we're a visual communications company. And to make it as simple as possible, we use the principles of visuals to make our clients' ideas and messages more understandable and actionable. Um, by visual communication, we mean animation, we mean live sketching like what Kent is doing. Um, our favorite and most new service is what we call remote notes, which is virtual live sketching, which like I said, Kent is doing right now. So before we begin, like I said, our number one goal today is to add value. You know, we want you to walk away with a few ideas for how to make your next virtual meeting better, your next virtual event better, your next webinar better. Uh, they can be better, they should be better, and so we'd like to offer some fresh ideas for how to do that. So we titled this webinar, Fresh Ideas from the Pioneers of Virtual Events. And if you've been following the sketch effect, you know that our fresh idea, like I mentioned, is our remote notes or virtual live sketching service. And although we're really proud of this innovative new approach to our live sketching service, um, we wanted to expand the conversation. There are a lot of fresh ideas out there when it comes to virtual events. And so in order to do that, we invited some friends to chat. Uh, we invited a few pioneers of virtual events. So why do we use that word pioneers? Well, the truth is virtual events is a brand new frontier. It's a world full of unknowns and we're all trying to navigate our way through it. So each of these leaders, each of the faces you see here are real pioneers when it comes to virtual events and they're each pioneering in different ways. So I'm incredibly proud and honored to invite these people to the table to share their fresh ideas. So I'm gonna do a quick round of introductions and then we're gonna dive in with Nick. So first off, we have Nick Rivero. Uh, Nick is the co-founder and chief technology officer at Meptic. Meptic is an events production company specializing in content creation, augmented reality and experience design. Say hey, Nick. Hey everybody. Awesome. Next up, we have Kevin Jennings. Kevin Jennings is the CEO and marketing strategist at Junction 32. And if I might add, he's also the co-host of a really awesome podcast called Executive Minds. I encourage you to check it out. Um, Junction 32 is a marketing firm that helps influencers and organizations grow their brands and increase revenue so they can impact people. Kevin, super happy to have you here. Great to be here, everybody. Next, we'll talk to Billy Bowie. Uh, Billy is the founder and president, president of Elevate Experiences. Um, Elevate is a business events consultancy focusing on creating meaningful moments that build culture and leadership. Billy, happy to have you here. Billy's muted, but you can tell that he's happy to be here. There is peace happy to signs. Be here. I'm unmuted that, now, happy to be here. That's awesome. And then finally, we'll talk to Taylor Estes. Taylor is the founder and CEO of Apple Box, a boutique event productions agency offering consultation, experience design, and production management for live events. Hey, Taylor. Hey, everybody. Happy to be here. This is going to be awesome. Awesome. Okay, so we're going to dive in first with Nick. Um, so, Nick, I'm going to invite you to join me uh, on the main stage, I guess. We'll call it a main stage. Um, and so, quick background of how I met Nick. Uh, I don't remember where I was, but I got a text from my wife, and she said, you've got to read this article. This guy is saying everything that you've been telling me um, for the last several months. So, I read the article. It was all about the events industry reacting to the disruptions caused by COVID-19, and I was amazed. Uh, we'll make that link available to all of our attendees if you want to read it. Um, but I did some research. I, I found him on LinkedIn. I learned that Nick is an Atlanta guy, just like us, has an awesome company, 
is an awesome entrepreneur. And so Meptic is super cool. I'm amazed at the work that you guys do, Nick. I don't even understand it exactly, but we're talking pro projection mapping, virtual reality, augmented reality, and more. So I'd like for you to kind of tell us in your own words what Meptic is, what you do, and then, um, you know, I know you've got some content to share, so feel free to dive yeah. into that and uh, share your fresh idea for virtual events. Awesome. Well, thanks for having me today. And uh, really excited to be here. And I'll jump in and uh, kind of show some of the backstory of, of what we do and, and whatnot. So my background originally uh, came from the live, live events industry. Literally a day, a day out of college, I ended up stumbling into a life of concert touring. So I spent 10 years of my life on the road uh, living on tour buses and airplanes, and it was really unexpected life, but a life that I ended up just loving. And I love the idea of live events and live shows because you just get this, you get this one chance to produce a moment that people get to experience. And it was just such a fulfilling idea, and I really just, I just loved it. It was something I never thought I would get into, and ended up, uh, you know, here we are, 15 years later. So specifically with Meptic, we started. Um, about six years ago, and Meptic was actually founded originally by my wife, Sarah. Her background is with uh, an MFA from SCAD in motion design, motion animation, but specifically she focused on large-scale projection on buildings and uh, some different things. And so when we started the studio, our original focus was doing just that, which was projecting on these large buildings. And this is actually a pretty recent project only about uh, eight months ago for the University of Tennessee. But we've done quite a few different things from TV commercials to everything like scenic design um, kind of in that realm of projection. And what we kind of really realized in that process is that there was something more that we really loved to that. And that's what kind of became what Meptic is, is this idea that we create experiences that drive human connection. And so much of what we do is based on two key things, which is creativity and technology. And the way we really do that is through a visual experience, as you can kind of see here. So as time moved forward, what we really started getting to, into is a lot more interactive technology. And that's really where my passion lies, is how do you use new technologies to engage people in different ways? And so we've done all sorts of crazy different things. This is some technology where we use the idea of motion capture. So what Hollywood uses where you see all those dots on people on a green screen, we use that same technology to project on things like a painter's canvas. So some kind of pretty interesting technology, but we just kind of figure out like, how can we use this technology to help create a better experience? How can we create something that might not have been done, but create something that's a really engaging new type of experience? So we've done this in a bunch of different ways, everything to things like this, where we do digital interactive experiences and things. This is for a skincare brand uh, called Drunk Elephant, which is a really fun name. They're a big skincare brand in Sephora, and we've been able to do these really cool just interactive experiences. So how we do things like this that just really engage people. Um, our technology has taken us to all sorts of different places. We've done things like this with interactive dancers. We've had the chance to work on really fun Super Bowl projects like this back uh, just in January in Miami for AT&T DirecTV. So with all this technology, it's really kind of taken us down a bunch of different paths. But now that focus has taken us to where we are and what we're talking about, which is the virtual experience. And our kind of foray into the virtual experience world was, was kind of actually a few years ago. It started about three years ago where we actually started with these ideas of, of virtual reality and augmented reality, which you hear a lot and our, our team started exploring these and kind of really asking how can we use these. And that venture for us started actually in the film world. And what we started doing very simply in the film world is we, use this technology that we were kind of inventing to replace green screens. So, you know, typically you might see on a film set, there's these big green, you know, empty voids. And then they just, you know, after they shoot the whole scene, they go in and they put in a scene that never existed there. 
And it's the same thing they do with a weatherman on a newscast every night. You know, we're all kind of familiar with that. But what we started doing is actually using some of the ideas we learned in live events and applying those to music videos and film. And what happens, what you're seeing in this frame, is we're not actually using a green screen, is we're actually using LED video screens. So what's happening is imagine like a, a giant computer monitor almost behind the artist. And what that means is we can actually record in camera exactly what you would see uh, in the finished product. So for somebody like a, a director who's standing on set, they can actually look at this and what they see in the room is exactly what the audience is going to see. There's no green screen. So there's no having to stand there and pretend what something looks like. And so we did this quite a bit for some different uh, uses in the film world, the music video world. But then we kind of started exploring where else could we go with this. And what we started doing is um, some different projects like this, which were actually for red carpet events. So people could walk up on a red carpet. And as you see here, we kind of use this augmented reality technology and the entire world just vanishes. So the entire physical world, you saw that office just vanishes and we can actually put people into a virtual world uh, live. So what we've been doing and is really focusing on how you do this in web and kind of virtual experiences. And so what we've been doing is this concept where we, we kind of brought back the idea of a green screen, but we basically take somebody on a green screen and then we can put them into a virtual world that doesn't actually exist. And the way we kind of think of this is like a video game is we're actually using video game technology literally to create what would be like a physical world, but virtually. So we can actually take somebody and put them into this world. And what's really cool is, is a video game uh, happens live. So as you know, when you play a game, the, the world reacts, things happen. And we're using those same exact ideas to do this here. So for instance, is we can put a musician into a virtual space. But what's really cool is that this virtual space is live. It actually reacts to what is happening. So if a performer um, has moves their gestures or moves their arms or they say something or they play a certain way, we can actually build these virtual worlds that are nuanced by the live performance. So we can put them kind of in any type of place or setting or anything and still have the feel of a live event. We started doing this in the fitness world, actually, which we thought was kind of a really cool use. And David, who's in this frame, is one of our designers. And David's actually a professional cyclist. And what you're seeing here is David's on a green screen. And we put him into this virtual fitness world that doesn't exist. Um, but what's really cool is we can actually incorporate live metrics. So you see there's kind of two different numbers on either side of the screen. And what we can actually do is read his heart rate. And we can read um, the rate at which he's pedaling and cycling and then actually use that to affect the world, like I said, much like a video game. So you can see as he's pedaling, the, the scene gets faster, it gets brighter, et cetera. Um, we've taken that to the other extreme and done some really cool things where we can actually build contemplative and meditative spaces such as this. And just uh, three days ago, we actually wrapped a really fun project for Lululemon. So what you see here is we had, uh, Matt, this trainer who was physically in our office, and we have him on this green screen. But what we see in the office is this, is you see him in this room behind the scenes, but what the audience sees streamed out to the world is actually this. So we're actually able to put him into this virtual environment that reflects more the idea of what's happening, you know, uh, this, this very serene, peaceful area uh, versus just having him say in his, you know, apartment. So that was so cool. really, really fun project and kind of shows what we're doing. And to kind of sum that up is what we feel is, is virtual experiences are really made up of, of two kind of key things right now. It's about audience engagement. And it's about a visual experience. 
so with audience engagement, you know, this is really probably one of the biggest uh, areas to be explored right now is how the audience engages because we're obviously not in a physical room where we can just, um, you know, have a band on stage and when somebody, when the audience likes the song, they just cheer. So, you know, we're really exploring what that means because right now audience engagement is really just chat windows, right? So I think, you know, there's a lot there to, to process in this new paradigm is, is how do we connect to people uh, in, the, in the ways we're used to, which is just being in the room together, but now we can't do that. Um, the second thing is, is the visual experience. And I think what's really cool is this technology is being used by some, some large companies that have done some really cool things. And just yesterday, Apple did some really awesome things with their keynote in a very similar vein. And you can see that they're able to create these just incredible virtual worlds that reflect the Apple brand, the Apple aesthetic, but using the exact same types of technology. Uh, even Snapchat did some really interesting things uh, just, I think this was about a week ago um, with their large keynote. So it's, it's really cool because you can put people into these virtual places and give a really a unique visual experience, kind of like what Snapchat had, did, is you don't have to abide, as I say, you don't have to abide by reality uh, in any right. way. So I think from here, simply put, is, you know, two things are going to keep happening in our mind, is that these visual experiences are only going to get better and more engaging. And then I think the other thing is, is the future is everything's moving to the cloud, right? We, we kind of joke about it, but I think it's very true, is we're seeing, like, the NFL and the NBA are talking about how to do things in the cloud and, and things of that nature. So I think that's kind of where it's all going from here. Um, so yeah, kind of wrapping up with that is you can find us and what we do at, at meptic.com and you can find us on social at meptic and you can check out more of all this stuff at meptic uh, slash virtual. Fantastic. I love it. This stuff is so cool. And, and the times I've experienced this, I'm just amazed. And so uh, Meptic, you guys are the team that does this stuff. I love it. It's awesome. Um, so yeah, we'll make all these links available to everyone attending today so that uh, if you didn't catch that, you can, um, you can check it out later. So Nick, thanks so much for sharing. I'm going to invite our next thanks. panelist up, uh, Mr. Kevin Jennings. Um, so Kevin Jennings, um, is, we, go, we go back a long way. So Kevin and I first met actually at a client event. I was sketching and Kevin was facilitating and I was amazed at his ability to kind of wield the room and get people talking and get some action happening. And we got to work together a few more times uh, and Kevin actually came and shared with our team at the Sketch Effect maybe a year or so ago. Um, so Kevin, uh, tell us a little bit about Junction 32, the work you're doing, and then we're going to specifically talk about how that applies to virtual events. Yeah, so the key thing for us right, is that without effective marketing, businesses struggle or fail. So our job is to create products and services that help these small businesses primarily uh, grow their brand and increase revenue so that they can impact people. For our work, there's a lot of related to helping leaders build their personal brand or leverage that to grow their organization and evangelize what they do. Um, or it is us coming alongside them, helping them build really marketing strategies um, and as they go to digital spaces and things like this. But because of that, a lot of my work is marketing events. And so, um, I said, so I had a chance to do a virtual event just a few months ago now uh, with Jen Hatmaker and then do one with a comedian um, here based in Nashville. And I'm doing one in a few weeks, a two-day conference uh, for Sarah Jakes Roberts. And it's really just saying, every, to, to William's point, everybody's trying to figure this out right now. I think I've never been in more meetings where everybody's saying, we don't know what to do and we're all making it up. And every single time we try something completely different, a new format to, to tinker and figure out the best way to go about it. Um, but for me on a day-to-day -day basis, this means leading virtual meetings. And that might mean like, well, yes, staff, of course, but facilitating. So I'm bringing in, so I just had a, um, about three weeks ago now, I led a team of 15 through a four day planning session all via Zoom. And if you're thinking that's horrible, it could have been. Like, it, 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 everything was stacked against us to make it horrible, but it wasn't. So hope I can share some of those learnings today. Awesome. That's great. I think this is especially relevant for a lot of, a lot of our clients, this Sketchback. I'm sure a lot of 
prospects out there because they're hosting virtual meetings. They're, they're running virtual workshops, multi-day meetings over Zoom, and they're just, they're pulling their hair out because it's not always the best experience. So tell us in your, in, in your eyes, what are some fresh ideas for, for virtual meetings, facilitating virtual meetings, or some best practices that you've, that you've uh, come across? Okay, so I think the best way to summarize my thoughts on this is give yourself permission to cheat. Now, that sounds like a weird way to frame it up, but I think in hindsight, we would say, well, when we're in person, William and I can read the room, we have a chance of bumping each other, have some small talk before. Psychology, I think, is already leaning towards showing all of us that people get on virtual meetings and they're exponentially more efficient. No one really wants to just hang out for 30 minutes on the computer before the meeting starts. And so people wanna get right to the work. And that's an actually a great benefit for you as a facilitator or a leader for a meeting. Because that means you don't have to stay on for the whole day to accomplish a day's worth of work. So I think that's the first thing, owning that piece. And then the other part I'd say with that is, if that's gonna be how it's gonna go down, prep matters more than ever before. Because the, the opportunity to pivot you can just say, well, let's just go over. Let's just order lunch and I'll eat on the screen. That doesn't translate the same. And people are actually are more respectful on Zoom. They don't want to cut each other off or things like that. So one thing we do to help cheat in our situation is we actually do personality tests on every attendee now. If you're going to be on our virtual meeting for a multi-day session, we will profile you to no end. And it's because we understand we have too many people who have been engaged in conversation and collaboration, and, and we don't get to navigate as normally the who can speak, who can't speak, who's in charge, personality types. We just say, tell us up front. And we will structure our meeting around make sure each individual is able to lean into what makes them great and makes them who they are and contribute. Uh, so we use the Colby a lot. Um, we use Strengths Finder for those who are familiar with that, and um, that's at Gallup.com. We use uh, the Enneagram as well. Uh, we use um, the um, assessment by a gentleman who wrote a book that is really called the Synergist Quiz, and so pretty much break people down into you know where they are if they're a visionary and their idea person or their operator and they're a how person, their process person. So we really want to make sure we just do all that profile, and that's been a big win for us. Um, and people feel that difference. They feel when you've thought about how you can include them. Um, and then from there, we'll start to structure out how we accomplish our objectives around large groups, small groups, what we call silent work sessions. So we actually will say, hey, okay, hey, during this part of the, of the workshop or the planning session, let's all be quiet. Like, it's okay to turn your camera off. It's okay to add that moment to get the focused work in because once again, when you know you're being watched on a screen as opposed to in a room, it does, you do, or you're more conscious of everything, how you look, you know, there's something in your teeth, you know, something just, it just feels different, you can see yourself. And so we try to make sure we have those moments. And then we integrate tools like Slack to do more brainstorming. And I know this sounds a little weird to say, what do you mean? Why would you take away the voice of people who are brainstorming? Well, that's because once again, in Zoom, the rapid fire in the delay of, of technology, you start to hear some talk over people and you want to stop talking. And so we do what we call it like quiet storms. Everybody jumps in Slack and we just start to, and we actually use Slack to integrate within Zoom. So we'll actually do the brainstorm session and then show that on screen with everybody else. But the key thing, it all starts with us. Who's in the room? What do they do? What do we know about them? And how can we do that? Um, and then I said a great Format might be large group, small group, large group break, or small group, large group break. So I would say just making sure you're mixing up the modalities throughout the day as, as in a rapid pace, um, I think also goes a long way. But I said, feel free to cheat. Do not people actually, what are your objectives? Tell people up front, what, do you, what is success? We poll every person. What would make this day successful for you? Up front. What do you mean? Like, that's cheating. It is cheating. We know exactly what, what bell to ring to make every single person who comes feel like they got what they needed. Over four days, I can accomplish 15 people feeling successful. But it happens because they just, they just told me and I worked it into the actual structure of the meeting and how it was facilitated. That's amazing. I love it. Yeah, I think with virtual events, the, the same rules don't apply. And I think people are struggling to fit this virtual round peg into a 
or this, you know, round peg into a virtual square hole and it's like not working. So I love these ideas, give permission to cheat. Prepping matters now more than ever before. As a facilitator, you have to be even more above and beyond creative in terms of, like you said, switching up the modalities, the different types of contexts. Um, I love the idea of quiet storms. You know, at the Sketch Fact, we've sat in a ton of brainstorms and all about ideas and throwing them out. And I think that's kind of a really interesting um, kind of take on that. So um, I'm going to have Kent share his screen in, in a quick second. But Kevin, if people want to get in touch with you and learn more about your work at Junction 32, what's the best way for them to do that? Well, yeah. So one of the things we've been doing in quarantine is redesigning our website. So if you go to, you can just connect me personally. If you go to kevinbjennings.com, um, I would love to connect with you one-on-one, -on -one, you know, and I said, we, and I can ha answer any questions. There's a little button there. You could click a button and send me an email. So just kevinbjennings.com and we can just talk through anything you're thinking about. I'm understanding, you know, whether we can serve you or not, we'll figure that out. But I want to just make sure I'm collaborating with you personally. And the other thing I would say is please, please call the sketch effect. I know that sounds like you didn't ask me to do that. I'm going to be transparent because people like them doing the work they do is feeding the work that I do, right? There's some, once when they, when, if you're doing a meeting and you really want to make sure you're able to get a lot out of it, I think facilitating is one thing, but obviously making sure you walk out with a tangible way to make it happen. Um, we work together well, and I would love to, so hopefully, if you're watching this right now, I'd love to have some kind of collaboration with me, you and the Sketch Effect can come together for a great meeting. Um, I know we can make some magic happen for you. Let's do it, yeah. And as someone who has sketched a meeting that you facilitated, I'll, I will say it was a really, it was a great meeting. All, all the, I think it's been three or four that we've done together. So that's awesome. Kevin, thanks so much. Um, My pleasure. We'll bring you back. We'll bring you back at the end when we do our Q and A. Let's, Let's go to Kent. Let's see what Kent is working on. Uh, as you guys know, Kent uh, is our live artist. Uh, if you've joined us late, uh, he shared his screen, his prepped uh, sketch earlier, and he's been busy sketching this amazing content. And so we'd like to, take a quick look at what Kent is doing. And um, here we go. awesome, so cool. So like we said, Kent is doing our remote note service. It's a virtual live sketching where uh, Kent is dialed into our meeting virtually. Actually, so Kent, like we said, is in Southern Utah, listening to this awesome content, capturing the big ideas in, in, in images, typography, color, and all that exciting stuff. So Kent, I'll let you uh, go back to your sketching. And at this point, I'm gonna invite Billy Bowie, our third panelist, to join us. So Billy, let's, uh, let's bring you up. Let's get, let's get that handsome face up on our screen. Um, so Billy Bowie is a really good friend of the Sketch Effect, a good friend of mine personally. We go a long way back. Um, I think we both started our companies around the same time, which is really cool. And in fact, you're a board member of the Sketch Effect. So you've been a, a tremendous value to our business um, and to me personally. We collaborate a lot. We love the work you do. So tell us in a nutshell, what is Elevate Experiences? And then um, if you want to go ahead and segue right into your content around virtual, uh, Fresh Ideas virtual events, go for it. So uh, Billy, take it away. Yeah, I appreciate it. Uh, William, thanks so much for having me. I appreciate Kevin's content. I love uh, the way he communicates and what he does. So make sure you go to kevinbjennings.com, go send him an email, go check out Nick's work. Um, I'm amazed um, really being introduced to Nick for the first time here, learning what he's doing, which is awesome. And then to see this content being sketched by Kent, I love that. So I'm super excited to be here. So Elevate, we're a brand experience agency that helps people tell their story through remarkable experiences. Uh, an event is something you attend, an experience is something you undergo. And so in short, I tell people, we're in the undergo business. We help brands uh, take their customers and their team members, help them undergo really cool things, uh, whether that's uh, an interactive experience like uh, remote notes where they can actually see the content, whether it's a great facilitating meeting, which Kevin and his team are great at, whether it's something Nick can put them into, we're all experiencing things. And so we started this brand with this idea that people want to not just attend an event, they want to experience something awesome. So that's really what Elevate's about. The, the word simply means to lift. Our logo is a wing. So a little bit, we want to help give brands wings in a sense and help them help them fly. That's awesome. I love, like I said, I love the work you do. You guys have done a lot of cool stuff uh, in virtual events, like, like the rest of our panelists, like, like myself, like the sketch fact when COVID-19 happened and we're all kind of coming to grips with the reality of our world uh, for the unforeseeable future. You guys pivoted fast, 
you built this amazing virtual studio in your office. You took a closet and you took everything out of it and you rebuilt this amazing thing. So tell us, uh, what are the ways, what are some fresh ideas that Elevate is bringing to the table when it comes to virtual events? Yeah, I'd love, love to give a few and I'll, and I'll go through a couple slides here behind me. Uh, so if you're able to go full screen where you're at on Zoom, um, I'll pop through a few of these and then uh, virtual event secrets today is the best place to go. If some of this intrigued you, uh, all of our things that I'm mentioning here are on that site. We have several trainings on there, um, Instagram, we're putting a lot of posts up there, different tips and tricks on virtual events and creating experiences. So uh, I will say from the get, uh, some of these things here, I'm going to go through pretty rapid fire. Uh, but I would love for you to visit virtualeventsecrets.today and uh, make sure you go there and I'll tell a few things that are there as well. Um, so how to make your virtual event awesome is a training we do there. It's an hour long training. I'm, I'm going to pack that into about four minutes here and just talk about one key point about making virtual events awesome. I chose the word on purpose, awesome. We could say cool. We could say nice. We could say professional. We chose that because we want people to have a bit, a bit of awe for a moment, uh, a bit of awe. And just like this, you can't control technical difficulties, right? And so that's why uh, even in this moment as I'm standing here, and you know it's your virtual event, you never quite know when the camera's gonna go. So this is a chance for me to introduce Sean Specey who's on our team. And uh, we've done 65 events since um, really COVID-19 happened. Our office was uh, sound equipment and then it totally turned into uh, our virtual event studio. And we help produce events for uh, big companies and small and help them really figure out how they tell their story uh, through remarkable um, experiences. And some of those things that we do um, in those trainings is we talk about the technology side, just like we're experiencing now. And what I've really challenged people to do is how do you stay calm under pressure? It seems like in this virtual world when something goes wrong, um, we tend to flip out even more on virtual. Um, and so this is uh, not a planned demonstration, but an actual one of, of my laptop went out for a moment. And so Sean Specey, who's on our team, is helping me figure out how to get that back on. But even if it doesn't, we train our clients, it's, uh, it's even more authentic uh, when you can reach to the camera to someone's heart versus just give them data for their mind. And so uh, there's a story uh, from Tour Story One that I'll, um, if we get the slides back up, I'll show you the picture. But it's this moment where uh, Woody and Buzz are about to go on this rocket ship and uh, Woody's got this um, match in his hand and he's about to light it and light the fire of this rocket. And they're about to take off to go find Andy and go on their adventures. Well, this truck flies by and blows out the match. And there's a moment where Woody stands there with this match in his hand and saying, oh my goodness, like, what am I, what am I gonna do now? And then he realizes there's another way. He takes Buzz Lightyear's helmet and uh, he actually, there we go, back on cue. Um, he takes Buzz Lightyear's helmet. Um, I'll skip to this, uh, cancel, postpone, reimagine. There's this moment here, uh, I'm looking up at the screen. If you're I'm not looking at you, I'm looking right here so I can see it too, is, the match goes out and he has this look on his face where probably a lot of you have been. It's like, oh my goodness, what am I going to do now? Well, then he takes Buzz Lightyear's helmet. He leans it down and the sun goes through his helmet. It lights the match. It lights the rocket and they take off. And in that moment, I'm reminded that every single one of you that are watching, whether you're an artist, whether you're an event creator, we have to have a new perspective because it is a brand new day. Um, we used to do events just like this. We host and MC and create big experiences for brands. Uh, events that look like this. Remember back in January when events looked like this and now they look a lot like this where you're in a studio. Uh, there's some things that have changed. A lot of things haven't changed. And here's a picture of our office that I mentioned. This is actually where I'm standing right now on March the 1st. And here's what our office looks like now. And probably a lot of you out there are feeling the exact same way. So some of the principles that we share um, in this are our virtual event secrets not today, but I'm gonna um, share a few of them with you. My favorite character in movie history is Yoda. The small little guy said this, he says, do or do not, there is no try. I'm not gonna say my Yoda voice right now. Uh, I might get William Warren to do that later with the beard, be more appropriate, but um, do or do not, there is no try. And for us, in order to make your event awesome, here's the things you have to do. So if you take a list, here's just five things to write down. And again, if you want more training on this, um, I would love to share that with you. Go to virtual event secrets today, the full training. But here's a, here's a quick snapshot and I'm gonna zero in this first one. We've narrowed it down to engagement, preparation, platform that you use, the talent slash content that you share, and the technology. And so you can see how all five of those have to be in place to put on a great virtual event. When Mark Zuckerberg was on CNN uh, just a few months ago and saying that Facebook is not doing any live events until 2022, I panicked for a moment and seeing Microsoft and other giant brands that are saying, we're just not gonna gather people in the events industry that causes a bit of panic. But I realized 
taking a clean sheet of paper, writing down all the things that you can do and other things that you can't do until you get back together, it narrowed down to these five things in order to do a really great experience. And I'll just share the first one with you and then I'll, uh, I'll jump off here because Taylor's coming up next from Applebox and uh, she's awesome. Engage with intentionality. There's this moment in this movie called The Greatest Showman. You guys know Hugh Jackman. He's awesome, very attractive. He's very ripped and he can sing, which is crazy. I can't do any of those. But Hugh Jackman has this moment where he's with his daughters in the movie and he's tucking them into sleep and he buys this wax museum that can't sell tickets and his daughters look up at him and say, dad, you need something sensational. You need something that's alive. And I think that's what we need on our virtual events as well. We don't need to just appeal to somebody's head. We need to appeal to their heart. And um, as you heard uh, Nick mention, there's lots of ways to connect. There's the chat feature, there's polls, there's all different platforms to do different things. But more than anything, we got to figure out how to engage with intentionality. On our YouTube channel is a great example of what we're doing is three easy icebreaker games to play on video conferences. This is a free video. Go watch it. It's got a couple hundred thousand views already. People are very interested on how do I engage my team? How do I engage their hearts? And so we're producing videos on our YouTube channel. We'd love for you to go subscribe to the channel and I'll put out content all the time about how to do this well. I want to give you a couple stats on how to engage and what happened. We did a client virtual hangout where they had 182 people. Uh, we managed the platform for them. We put it all together and we played a game called this or that in chat. That's a moment of engagement that we have. And in a five minute span, we had 641 chat messages. So we're, the measurements now are different, right? As virtual event leaders, we have to be a pioneer on how we measure the success of it. And so sharing that with clients, they were like, oh my goodness. In five minutes, we had 641 chat messages. That's pretty impressive. We did a 20 minute leadership event where there was 2,100 people that attended it. Um, there were 42.37 chats per minute. Now I'm not sure how you do a 0.37 chat and I'm not a mathematician, but that's what it was. And we, um, we realized that in chat, some very things, easy things to ask, just as William did, is your name, where you're tuning in from, maybe something that's your favorite and something that you're learning. Getting people talking early on your events is something extremely important because that'll continue that engagement throughout. Two things I want to mention that I'm done is the Ultimate Virtual Event Roadmap is a free resource. If you go to virtualeventsecrets.today, uh, you can get this free resource. And we basically tr treated it just like a map and said, how do you do a virtual event? Here is our roadmap for you. This is a free item. You can go download it. It doesn't cost anything. And our team put our heart and soul into it to help people. Obviously, we would love to work with folks that are doing virtual events, but this is sort of our uh, flagship item that we can say, hey, how many people can we help with uh, this change over to the virtual world? Something you can purchase from us is called the um, Ultimate Virtual Event Toolbox. It, that's supposed to be safe. It says safe. I typed this right before we started, but save time and energy. And uh, this is the ultimate virtual event toolbox. This is a keynote speaker media kit, comprehensive speaker email templates, real time social media checklist, DJ equipment, essentials inventory. So this is when you're thinking about um, a virtual event. This is a toolbox um, that you can purchase on that same site. And so that site I mentioned is virtual event secrets today is a place to go. And so those are some of the things we're thinking about. Those other four points that I mentioned, uh, you can go check those out on our website on the full training, but that's just a little something for you there, William Warren. Awesome, Billy, so good. Always love hanging out with you. I got the pleasure of participating in Billy's team's Elevate Summit a week or so ago, and it was a fantastic event. We got to sketch and I got to present. So uh, love, uh, always love hanging out with, with you, Billy. Awesome, okay, our last panelist, last but not least, and then we're gonna open it up to some discussion, is Taylor Estes. Um, so Taylor, come on up, step Hello. up to the stage, to the mic, whatever, you know, whatever we call it these days. And um, so Taylor, if I remember correctly, I think we connected on LinkedIn or we had a mutual connection introduce us, we grabbed coffee. Um, I got to know you and your husband and learn about Applebox and the work you guys are doing. And so, yeah, I would love to just let you kind of tell us a little about Applebox, the work you're doing, and then share a couple of fresh ideas for virtual events. And then, um, and then we'll go to a group Q&A discussion at that point. So Taylor, awesome. tell us all about Applebox. Thank you, first of all, William, for having me here today. Nick, everyone here on this panel has just been awesome. Nick blows my mind. I actually found, sorry, quick plug for Nick. I found him kind of as we were helping people um, pivot to virtual a few months ago. And what they are doing over there is just blowing my mind. Um, 
So you guys got to reach out to them. And the sketch effect, you guys are so incredible at what you do. We have had the pleasure of working with your team, William, at a few Chick-fil-A events. And we actually gifted um, what they sketched out to one of the keynotes and they were just blown away. They had never seen um, your service offering before. So everybody give William some work. They are just super rad. Um, but okay, fine. You're making me talk about myself. So I'll talk about Apple Box for a second. Um, we are an event production agency here in Atlanta. As you said, we do consultation, creative design, and production management for events. Um, we mostly stick to internal meetings. Uh, so I say B to E, like business to employee. We don't really do a lot on the marketing or experiential activation side of things. Um, so a lot of C-suite leadership meetings, internal sales and marketing conferences, that type of thing. And that's really our sweet spot. Our doors opened in 2011. Um, and I'd really say like 2015 on, the majority of the events that we have put on have had like an online component. So we're really comfortable with sculpting that online attendee experience. Um, it's something that we've been doing for, I guess, half a decade now. Um, and so it's a lot of fun. Um, I don't know if you guys are anything like me, the people tuning in, but I have still been learning so much the last few months. Um, and I'll be the first one to say that I don't have it all figured out. Um, but one thing has become crystal clear for me, and that is that this event industry is made up of such a BA group of problem solvers. Like this event industry is blowing me away. It's in our DNA, problem solving is. And what do we do for a living? We gather people together. Well, what does a pandemic say we can't do? Gather people together. And so us as event professionals, we're like, no problem. We're going to do it anyways. We're just going to do it in a totally foreign land online. And we don't even speak the language, custom code, HTML platforms, but we're going to do it anyways. So I'm just so impressed with our industry overall. I think the pace of learning and the level of innovation that we're seeing come out right now is just, it's just really incredibly powerful. So I want to spend a couple minutes that I have with everybody today, um, kind of highlighting some of the do's and don'ts that we have experienced um, in the past five years or so of doing online. So I hope some of it is relevant to you guys. Um, first thing is I want you I want to urge you to make the user experience and the attendee journey as easy as possible. So uh, think through every touch point that you're sending out and make sure it's helpful and it's really creating an effortless experience for people online. Um, an overcomplicated user experience, I think, is the number one thing that can kind of stand in your way uh, when you're going to deliver value and influence behavior for your attendees. So um, I heard an amazing quote the other day, and it was, Thinking is to humans as swimming is to cats. We can do it, but we certainly don't like to. <laughs> and so I think that really applies to online events. Um, so whatever actions you are requiring of your attendees, it needs to be easy. It needs to be intuitive. It needs to have so few clicks that maybe your lovely grandmother could navigate the platform, right? And sorry, grandmas, for all you tech savvy grandmas out there, but I just use that kind of metaphor to say like, this really needs to be easy for the attendees because we as humans, we don't really like to think much. It needs to be fun and easy. Um, there's also not a bunch of like smiling event volunteers with bright colored shirts that can say, yes, ma'am, your breakout room is right this way, follow me. So just minimizing that experience online and just making it easy is like my number one thing I always help people with. Um, also, do make sure that you make the attendees as comfortable as soon as they quote show up. Um, Billy's team is so good at this. So they have used confetti cannons before. They're great at these icebreaker games. Um, they're great at that. Um, okay, anytime you go to an in-person event, what do you do as soon as you walk into the ballroom? There's music playing, right? So drop those cortisol levels as event designers delivering an event in an online format. It's still our job to make people feel comfortable. So cortisol levels are kind of like our body's built-in alarm system. And those are naturally going to be raised when we're doing something new attending virtual events right now are new to a lot of people. So it's our, it's our job to just make people feel comfortable, do a dance party, let Billy's team shoot off some confetti cannons, just try, just try and have some fun. I also say um, 
one kind of fun idea is to get them involved in the planning process as attendees. I feel like this is kind of basic psychology, but if the attendees feel like they've helped sculpt the narrative, if maybe they helped design the overall event through some pre-event surveys and questionnaires, maybe they pick out the session topics live, um, this makes them more likely to show up and to stay um, for the entirety of the event. Also, don't, if you don't, don't get analysis paralysis, guys. You've probably spent, if you're anything like me, you've probably spent the last few months on back to back to back platform demos and you feel like you're still just kind of scratching the surface of what's available out there. But I don't want you to panic and I don't want you to get frozen and in indecision. You know, my, my company right now is offering like free 30 minute consultation calls on helping people think about you know, pivoting to online or reimagining their event into an online format. And there's one thing I know every time I'm going to hear on those calls and it's, well, we don't know what platform to use. And so I say, try something, break some stuff and do better next time. <laughs> like, don't, don't overthink it. It's almost like online platforms are like virtual venues. So if you decide to go to the strip in Vegas and then that didn't end up being a good fit. Well then go to the beach next time for your sales conference, but you've got to do it. You've got to step out of your comfort zone and just try it and have fun with it. I do want to go super tactical for a second. Um, I know when a lot of you guys were registering for this event, um, you kind of put in some like pain points or feedback about what you were hoping to learn. And a lot of you guys um, typed in there that you're wondering how to replicate those authentic like networking moments and authentic conversations that may happen, you know, as people gather around the coffee station or on their way to a breakout room. And so um, there's a few platforms I want you guys to check out. It's Hopin, um, Big Marker, Brella, GTR, Icebreaker.video. Um, and you guys can reach out to me and I can send you this list and whatnot. But those are really great platforms for anybody ha that has an event priority um, for that, like one-to-one -one networking or the random networking components. They have those built into the platform, which are super great. Um, also, don't make your attendees feel like you're settling for online, but instead play it up. So make it an extension of your event brand. So go Sketch Effect Live 2020 and, and go after that, you know, Jimmy Fallon effect or Saturday Night Live effect or Good Morning America. Just turn your event into a one hour super fun broadcast with shortened sessions, um, shortened topics. That's much better for virtual attention spans. I guess what I'm trying to say is don't just copy and paste your in-person event agenda into an online format because it's not going to work. Um, vary your session formats. Kevin had great ideas for, you know, that on a Zoom call and whatnot. Um, one of the ones we're having a lot of fun with for client events right now is just a fast paced bullet point session. So three minutes, three bullet points that are all about, you know, a specific tactical actionable tip around a certain topic and you can have maybe five speakers that do that back to back and I bet attendees are just jotting them down because they're real actionable and they can be fast paced and it's a lot of fun. Um, I just I'll say I really want you to incorporate some surprise and delight moments as well that may not be available for an in-person event um, that might be available while everyone's at home. So I've been saying reallocate your food and beverage budget to some Uber Eats deliveries that break up the monotony of everybody being at home. Um, also, as social distancing restrictions are kind of loosening up now, we're really encouraging our clients and Q4 and whatnot to do host sites and viewing parties where maybe a gathering of 10 people can get together and you ship out a swag box so everybody's got their sketch effect tumblers and their sketch effect sweatshirts and then they can tweet those pictures of those gatherings and and you can still have that community community feeling just on a smaller scale um i could talk about this forever and just keep going and going but i know that i'm about to hit my time um we're just having so much fun reimagining events here at apple box but i'll end my time with you by saying this i just urge you to think creatively and enjoy this professional detour that we're all on. Nobody saw this time coming 
And it would be really easy to frame your thinking with constraints rather than possibilities, or you could spend your time waiting to get back to normal. But this is such a unique opportunity as an industry for us to try new things and sharpen skills that might otherwise we might have avoided if in-person uh, was still an option. And I will definitely say this, all of these skills that we are gaining right now are going to help us reform the industry moving forward. So when you think virtual, I don't want you to panic and think, oh, what platform? I want you to think, wow, this is great. This event of ours can be inclusive. It can be safe. It can be environmentally conscious. We can reduce consumption and waste and emissions. This can be a chance to forge new partnerships like with the panelists on this call today. Um, it can help us sharpen all these skills that are going to be required of us as to be a more sustainable industry moving forward. So that's it. I just like threw a bunch at you, but awesome. I wanted to try and stay close to time. I love it. Where can people learn more about Applebox, Taylor? Appleboxsolutions.com. Fantastic. And you can also find me on LinkedIn, Taylor Estes. I'd love Very to chat good. with anybody. Yeah. I love that idea. I love that there's value in the detour. I love that we should kind of rid ourselves of this, of this sense that a virtual event is like a step down from in-person. Yeah. It's different, but we're not settling. Uh, I love it. So we have, uh, we're right at 12, but we're going to keep going for about five to 10 more minutes. So we hope that people can join us because we want to do some Q and A. Uh, we've got a lot of great questions coming in. Um, Billy looks a little bit different. Uh, that's actually Sean Specey on Billy's team. I think Billy had to jump onto another event, but Sean's going to be helping answer in Billy's place. So we've got a lot of great questions. Um, and so my first question is for Kevin. Um, and this question, uh, the, the, the user or the, our attendee asks, do you always use multiple personality tests when getting an attendee profile? I believe you mentioned Strength Finders and Enneagram and Colby. Any others you recommend from a facilitation standpoint? Yeah, I do. I actually have a big list of them, and I could tell you, I'll tell you what, one in particular, but if you want to get the list, uh, just text hashtag awareness, so hashtag awareness, for like self-awareness, so hashtag awareness to my cell phone, 615-455-3399, so 615-455-3399. It will auto-reply with uh, the, the link to the PDF, and I have like 10 assessments on there, but there's one that no one knows about that I'll tell you about right now. It's called the saboteurs assessment. It's all about how you self-sabotage. And, and for, for people to understand, like when you're in a meeting, that's when people are most likely going to get into their feelings, right? Because you don't know what they're showing up with that day. An argument from their, with their spouse at home, a tough situation with their child, or maybe they're tired of being overlooked and they feel like someone's stealing their idea. There's no telling what's going to happen in that room. And you have to learn how to diffuse people's, how, how people self-sabotage and recognizing it in advance, there's a lot you can do there. Um, and, there's, and it's based off by a Stanford professor named Shazad Shamin. Uh, and he's done a research on this, and uh, it is amazing. So it's called the Saboteur Assessment. If you uh, download that free resource, and I have no upsell behind it. So if you're like, now I'm on Kevin's email list, you're not going to be on my email list unless <laughs> you want to be. Um, but it is an amazing assessment as well. So like 10 of them on, on that list, but that's my favorite one. Awesome. That's great. I know the team, uh, Tori, just uh, put that information in the chat. People want to <clears throat> look into that. All right. That next question is for Taylor. Uh, so Taylor, this question is, how do you gather attendee feedback in planning ahead of time so that attendees feel connected to the meeting beforehand? So any tips Love that. on that? Yeah, so um, you can really take that conversation online to your social media channels. Um, we also really recommend sending out pre-event surveys and questionnaires um, after people register for an event, kind of putting those questions and collaboration process kind of into the drip campaign leading up to the event. And then you can also do it real time. We use um, Slido, which is kind of a audience engagement system. Um, there's a lot of platforms that have it built in, but I really like Slido because it's right there on screen. It can kind of be in the presentation. There's a QR code. People can scan it. It'll be on their phones. Um, and it really just makes that two-way dialogue start at the very beginning of the event um, and then all the way through it. That's awesome. That's yeah. great. All right. Next question is for Nick. So this question is, can you host meetings where speakers stream in from a virtual interactive world on any meeting platform such as zoom blue jeans etc 
or do you have to ha or do you have your own meeting platform to host these events and and do you then stream it in so how does the hosting work yes so uh the simple put thing is like the tech we're doing in a, in a way a lot of these work is it's all cloud-based so everything is just you know up in the cloud and everything can integrate pretty much with anything. Um, on a technical level, it's pretty simple to get, you know, most platforms to all integrate in some way, shape, or form together. That's awesome. Yeah, I think with your with your content, I'm I'm like, man, how do we how do I bring that to like my you know my little room here, or my Zoom? But um, that's why there's experts like you guys um, to figure all it out. That's awesome. All right, one more question, and then we're going to take a look at Kent's sketch. So our last question is for Billy slash Sean. Um, not, and the not question Billy is, <laughs> yeah, we got Sean. Um, so engagement is a top priority. Uh, my company, this, this, uh, the person who submitted this question, my company has only one platform, Zoom. I'm seeking innovative and creative ways on how to increase engagement on Zoom. What would you recommend? Yeah, that's a great question. And uh, just to address it, the reason why Billy's not here is we, we thought it'd be fun to mix it up. I was running things behind the scenes for Billy. So I get to help answer a question or two here also. But um, as far as engagement goes, I would encourage you to look at um, doing a couple of different things. Number one is you can present content in different ways. Like for example, like a lot of the panelists here have different looks and different backgrounds and different fields. So like William could, for example, in order to engage people, he could have a live sketch happening on a whiteboard or something behind him. He, we've got Kent who's then sketching and drawing things out differently. I've got a screen right behind me. And a lot of times we go full screen with just the image or just the video. So even on Zoom, like we, we in our studio, we have like a video switcher so we can switch between camera angles and different things. I would mix it up also with just like what William and his team have done from Sketch Effect, where you do some panel, some Q&A, some like individual talk. And because I know that like if you do, there are statistics that show you have to have someone's, if you produce like a video, right? You have to change the camera angle or change something every like five to six seconds in order to hold someone's attention, which is crazy. Like that's so quick. It changes so fast. So I would recommend that number one. And then when you plan out those different segments, try to find some way to get them involved. For example, well, we did an event with a client and they wanted people to be able to say they were, they were going to donate money to, the pan, to some organization for the pandemic. And they said, here's organization A. And here's organization B. So they explained what they were going to do. They allowed their team to Venmo into a certain fund that was then going to be donated towards something. And then they did a live poll where people had to vote on organization A or B. And that allowed them to feel like they were participating in what was happening in real time because they were. And then whatever the vote came out to. So I would en encourage you to, to look at all those different things and map out the segments, present the content in some way, and then use technology in some way, whether it's chat or poll and, and mix it up and integrate that into every single session. That's awesome. I love it. All right, so Ken, I'm gonna let you share your sketch. I know you've probably got a little bit more polishing to do, but while you're doing that, I, I love, uh, I think some of the themes that came out of this were just intentionality, um, creativity. Now more than ever, people that are in the event space have to be creative. They have to be intentional. Um, what, what worked then isn't working now. Uh, so all of these pioneers, Taylor, Nick, Kevin, uh, Billy and his team, like Sean and the others, th these guys and ladies are, are doing the creative legwork. They're thinking up out of the box solutions, amazing ways to make virtual meetings, not lame to make them awesome. Um, like Taylor said, this is not a step down. It's just a different step. Um, and so as you can all see here, this is Kent's sketch. Let's give Kent a round of applause for his awesome work. Um, he's going to keep adding a little bit more polish to this. Um, and we're going to make this available to everybody because um, there's so many great ideas at the sketch fact. We really believe in making ideas visual um, in order to make them more, most in, most impactful, most effective. So we're going to make this available to everybody. Um, so Kent, you can go ahead and, and turn your share off. And so, to the panel, I just wanna say thanks so much for being here. Um, really amazing stuff. I think even though we're all in the events space, we all have a very different 
angle on it. Um, and that's so amazing to me. Um, we all are doing live events, but we're all doing it in, our, in unique ways. We're all bringing unique ideas to the table. And so I hope our, I hope our clients, hope prospective clients walk away encouraged that virtual events can be awesome, that they can be better, they should be better, and that there's teams out there uh, like uh, Taylor's team and Nick's team, Kevin's team and Billy's team that are doing that. And so with that, we're going to close out, but we're going to make this available to everybody. We're going to record this. Uh, we'll send out the follow-up materials, anything that you want uh, and need to follow up with these folks. But thanks again to you guys, to our panelists. Thanks to everyone who attended today. And with that, we're going to sign off. Thanks, everybody. Enjoy your Tuesday and hope to talk soon.